Marcello, how come it says Luan uh, Menez? How come oh, it let me change the name. It's my friends. Oh, got gotcha. you. Okay. You okay. Just, like, shared the fucking. Yeah. Wait. All right. Um, Big Mo, you're out east. Yeah, coming back Thursday, dude. Can't wait, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good out here, but the gyms are pretty shitty. <laughs> and uh, it's, I mean, I don't mind talking to people and stuff, but it's kind of hard to get a workout in out here because everybody knows me and it's my first time back in, in a while. So everybody wants to like chit chat and stuff. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to pure and just, uh, and just hitting it. Yeah. Where okay. is he supposedly? So I'm in uh, Newfoundland right now. That's where I'm okay. from. Yeah, yeah. You know where that is, right? Never been. Uh, I yeah. honestly never really left British Columbia, to be honest. Like, the first time I actually left was uh, to Alberta, right after the Chicago Pro with my mom. And I did the Nationals back in 20, 2021, I believe, in Toronto, but I didn't really get to meet Toronto at all. Yeah, so I'm, like, on the opposite end of that from you. I'm, like, the, you know, Newfoundland's, like, the big island, like, on the very east coast of Canada. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty. it would be, like, nine hours of flying to get to British Columbia from here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what's going how's on? It been? How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, man. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. You're good. I forget about that. Yeah. How's everybody? Awesome. So, Marcelo, man, how's your prep for the Olympia? Well, it pretty much... I'm not sure if you guys are following on Instagram, but it's, it's I like having burgers every second day, pretty much at this point. <laughs> That's awesome. Because <laughs> well, like how the story goes, like, this oh, like, sure. long short. Um, I did my first show this year. Uh, like last year was a break; I took the whole year off to take care of my heart. We can like get more into it. Um, but then this year I got back, and my plan. Um, okay, let me start from the from the beginning. I believe it's easier. Um, so my last show uh, up until this year was the Canadian Nationals 2021. I played second behind Medak. Uh, I'm not really sure his name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Really good, but yeah. I'm not sure if he's around anymore. I haven't seen any updates. Um, yeah, he he trains here up here. Yeah, he trains here with us. Yeah, okay. So he plays yeah. first, I play second. Um, and then right after that, I went back to Brazil. Um, and I like, because it's always in Brazil that I do a whole like body like examinations, you know, like thorax, like everything, like heart, blood work. Um, yeah. And they found out that it had like a heart insufficiency, like a, a ejection fraction insufficiency. Um, and I do blame COVID for it, um, simply because when I was, uh, well, I started bodybuilding in 2020, uh -huh. 2020, up until when we got vaccinated in Canada, I was in Canada, um, I didn't have anything. A year after the vaccine, I tested, and I'm my heart is like failing. It's not failing, but it's, it's weaker. Um, and funny enough, like one of the medicines that I have to take nowadays, because I have to like be on four like different kinds for the rest of my life, um, is the same brand as the vaccine is AstraZeneca. So it was just to me, well, whatever. But let, let's not get like into into that too much. So I do the show. I like uh, so I find out about the horde, um, and then I just decide that 2023 has got to be like the whole year uh, natural, pretty much. So I was like 100 mg of test a week, which is like physiological levels, right? Um, but the whole year, um, even though I had to lose weight, I had to like be on a different lifestyle, like more focused on cardio and whatnot, like to actually take care of my heart. I was still training and dieting because that's our lifestyle, right? So I never quit it. It's not like, well, I can't bodybuild anymore. I'm going to have like Oreos for breakfast. Yeah. That's not me. Um, so I take the whole year off, 2023. Um, I take care of my board. Luckily, I mean, not luckily. I don't want to say luckily. Um, but thankfully, my hug goes back to normal. Um, so this year started. And well, after a whole year natural, I tell myself, well, I need the whole year to grow back. I mean, to like to put on the, the muscle that I lost and to put on more tissue. So I do like three months of off season, like from January to April, um, around that. And then I come to New York, which is where I am right now. Um, I was with my friend Eric, uh, who like he, he won Pittsburgh Pro as a classic, and then he plays second in New York. And here is where I've met Chris for the first time. And like we start talking, he's like, "Well, uh, you're not gonna take the whole year off. You're gonna compete in Vancouver Pro. You're gonna turn pro." 
Um, and on the back of my mind, I'm like, well, I don't believe it, <laughs> you know? Like, I, I always saw myself as, like, the skinny guy, especially after a whole year natural. But, like, who am I compared to Chris? Like, Chris has been around forever. Like, he's probably the most knowledgeable guy there is. So if he said so, I'm like, okay, let's go. Um, so we had, from the day we started, like nine to 10 weeks until the Ben Pro. I don't remember. I, I believe it was nine weeks. So within seven weeks, uh, we already did like the regional, the regional qualifier that I needed uh, in Alberta, like the TNT. And there I won the overall, and then I won the overall of the overall. It's like a prize we have for like the best competitor of like all show. Um, a week after that, so like the following week, uh, it was supposedly a rest week. I mean, not not to rest, but I wasn't competing. However, my mom came from Brazil to visit me in Canada. So like, well, she's here. I like competing. I like when she's with me. Let's do the show again. So like after TNT, the same, the following week, we do the Vancouver Open Naturals or something of the sort. Mm -hmm. I win the overall again. And then the third week is when the Ven Pro happens. Um, so I go into the Ven Pro. I did the, the, the heavyweights. And then I won the heavyweights, and I beat uh, Eric Janik on, on super heavyweights. I turned overall, um, and that's where I turned pro. So pretty much like the third show in three consecutive weeks. And then the following day, I go against two <laughs> on mm -hmm. the Open. Uh, yeah. But again, I went against two and against you as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, when I went to the Open, I wasn't expecting anything at all. Like You guys are much bigger than I am. Um, I just wanted to have fun. So I went, and, uh, and we did it. Uh, I placed like nine, I believe. Um, but then like, what, what's funny is like, even the day before I turned pro, like I sent a picture, like before I was leaping to Chris, he's like, you're going to win, you're going to turn pro and you're going to go to Chicago next week. In my mind, I was like, well, even if I win, I'm not good enough to like compete as a pro yet. But if he says so, I'll just do it. So yeah, I turned pro the following week, the fourth consecutive week for the, like the, the fifth show in four, in four weeks. I go to Chicago. It was like my actual pro debut as a, as a 212, and I win it. Um, so, yeah, well, that was the year up until there. So that was at the Olympic qualification right there. But, again, it was like the fifth show in four weeks, right? So I, my body, like, just the following the day after Chicago, I woke up broke. Yeah. Like, my body was just so tired. And then Chris even said, do you want to go to Tampa? And I told him, like, listen, I'm going to go work out right now. So the show was on a Saturday. Uh, on Monday, I arrived in Calgary, and that's when he called me and asked about Tampa. I'm like, well, I'm going to train right now and see how I feel, and we go from there. Dude, like, I kid you not, like, I get to the gym, like, for a, a post session. I don't even feel my back at all, like, the contraction, you know? So I, I call him, like, listen, my body really needs a break, Um, so let's take this whole week off. I'm going to, like, enjoy Calgary with my mom, and, like, next week, we start the prep for the Olympia. It would be nine weeks from the Olympia at that point. So I take the whole week off, like traveling around Calgary, went to the Rocky Mountains. So, so beautiful, man. Um, and I was enjoying food. However, at the same point, uh, at the same time, I was like, well, I want to eat stuff that I like, but I don't want like to have any rebound because next week I want to start the prep for the Olympia fresh. So in my mind, it made sense to be on a deficit for that whole week. And like start the the Olympia prep the week after like from below the cap, so you could like ramp things up to start with, and then and then like you go from there to the Olympia, right? However, I was like moving so much in Calgary in terms of like doing hikes and all that. Um, I was eating stuff that I like, like bagel, oatmeal for breakfast, like eggs, you know, like clean stuff. Um, uh, and then like a week after, I wake up like uh, six pounds below the cap. And keep in mind, in Chicago, it wasn't easy to even make the weight cap. So that whole week off actually got me like into a really, really flat stage. Um, so we go back to the diet, supposedly to the Olympia. Uh, my body starts slowly to recuperate, but like really, really slowly. And then it gets to the weekend. And Chris says, well, what do you think about Texas? I'm like, well... Honestly, I don't think my body is going to, like, manage it, but let's take it day by day. Because with Chris, like, literally everything is day by day. There's no decisions until, like, the day. So the the deadline to actually do Texas, like, to subscribe for Texas, was on a Saturday or Sunday. 
every single day since Monday, I would check in, like, waiting for an answer, like, from him, you know? Mm. So, like, we, we did, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then I wake up Sunday, I'm like, Chris, I need a response. He's like, okay, let's go from broken, <laughs> the most broken on, on the beginning of the week, to Texas. And then, well... When we started the, the peak for Texas after, you know, like a whole week off in Calgary, traveling around and then like one more week of dieting alone. Um, but like the, the truth is, the truth is my body didn't recuperate, you know, like I uh, it just didn't make it on time. I still placed top three out of like 20 guys uh, on the 212. Um, but the physique just wasn't as good as Chicago and probably not even as good as Vancouver, to be honest. Um like Stu just been through the same pretty much, so he can he he knows what I'm talking about. You're mute. Wait, what what do you mean? Um, third in Chicago. Oh, That's sorry, like, third in Texas. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yes, you're, 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 yeah you're good. You're good. What's up, Stu? I was say, Marcelo, like you did about two and a half times as much as I did in half the time frame. So. Like, I don't really know what that's like. <laughs> Dude, but, but again, like, it's just, to me, so the, the thing is, like, from when we decided on Sunday to actually do Texas, like, the following week, I, I was, like, on the back of my mind, I was, like, my body is not going to respond as well as it should, but I want to take advantage of, like, one more travel, um, to be with Chris once again, to be on stage once again, because I just love doing this, you know? Um, so even though I had the risk... And I knew it that like my body wouldn't respond as much as it did before. I just wanted to try to give it a try. I mean, Chris would go, get to know me better. And well, it is what it is. Like again, a top three at like seventy percent of my potential, whatever. At that point, isn't bad at all. So I'm not complaining. The whole experience is super valid. I don't regret by no means, um, but I do know I could be like much much better if I had rest. So now. Yeah. Um. This week is like the. This is the second week after Texas, ish. Yeah. We just like being eating so much. Like uh, pretty much I'm having like burgers like for the third time already. Um, and like carbs in every meal, like 400, 500 grams of rice. We 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 are using insulin at this point. Uh, pre workout, uh, ten I use, with like five hundred grams of rice. So pretty much in zero cardio at all. Um. So I'm sure. Out of everyone prepping for Olympia, I'm probably the one eating the most right now. But that's because my body was really broken. Like when Chris says, well, we need to bring you up more before we start cutting again. So we yeah. probably have like one more week um, after this to grow a little bit more because I am holding condition and like very, very, very well. And the nicest thing that's going to happen is as soon as Chicago was over, um, and I actually have the video uh, on my IG, Chris went to my room for dinner. He picks up his phone. He calls Jose Raymond, puts on the table and says, uh, as soon as like Jose picks up, he's like, do you want to take Marcello Wobo for the, like, the, for the final like two months or so uh, to the Olympia? He said, fuck yeah, I want to be a part of it. So on Sunday, this Sunday now, I'm going to Jose's and I'm going to be at his house as a prep for the O, which right. to me, it's just so surreal <laughs> to think, well, I was, I was an amateur like two months ago. Like, yeah. At the beginning of the year, I didn't even think I was going to compete, you know, like in, even if I did, the Olympia or even placing at a pro show was like on the back of my mind so far, but I've never done bodybuilding, like thinking of the places. I've never been into it, like any shows thinking, well, I got to go and win. I'm not saying this to like to sound good or to be cliche, but it's just, I've always been, well, I'm not sure how good I can be, but I know how hard I can work. And that is what's going to go beyond from here. So that's what I've always done. Like Chris says, I do. I do to the best I can. And whatever comes from it is just a consequence. And the consequences of it has been very, very overwhelming this year. Um, I honestly didn't really have much time to process everything that's been happening, you know? Yeah, cool. What, what about you guys? How's uh, off-season training going, Stu? Brady? You're muted. You're muted, Stu. I was gonna or, say, I feel like we said Stu yeah. first. That's too bad. <laughs> no, no, your your microphone is up. You got to put it down. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Maybe not. No. It's too much there. About that. 
Now yeah. you're good. Yeah. yeah, there we are. I found the right thing to click. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty beat up this week, man. I'm doing a deload. I've been because uh, I went down to Texas and I saw Marcelo compete there. Uh, speaking of which, the Brazilians cleaned up there. They won in classic. They won in women's physique, and Marcelo got third in two twelve. Yeah. The guy that won actually lives in Brazil. He's from Argentina, but he lives in Brazil. Really, he does. Yeah, uh, Francisco. Yeah, I didn't know Francisco. that. All right, so there you go. I got another one. <laughs> I'm in that Brazilian water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't drink it, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so like I went down to Texas and like you know hanging out with my buddies, training with them. We beat the shit out of ourselves, and then I got sick when I got back again, and then. um I'm just trying to dig myself out of that hole right now. Yeah. I've had a Where pretty did you crap. There? It's a destination like usual. We went to Absolute Recomp in Las Colinas, which was uh, the one with all the crazy colored lights and shit. I don't know if yeah. you went there. Fuck yeah. it. No, no, the thing is, well, I only had one <laughs> session there and I wanted to go to Metroflex just for the vibe of it, you know, like Ronnie and all. Uh, but I did go to a destination only for a haircut. Um, and as soon as I landed, like people, was that? Did Jay cut your hair? Yeah. Jay's the man. Yeah. And then, um, but I, I heard of like this absolute recall. Like people were saying like, you got to go there. It's like so close to the hotel that you're staying at. Uh, but then they also told me, well, and it's a pretty good TikTok vibe. I'm like, why would I go to a fucking gym with like TikTok vibes? You know, <laughs> that's definitely not what I'm looking for. <laughs> gym it's just the people there man uh and you know if, you, if you're big enough and you move in a group of two or three guys and you're training hard you know everyone's polite and you could do your thing right but yeah there's uh there's a early 20s kind of not that serious crowd in there like it's when it comes to the actual equipment how is it comes to what like the actual equipment is it good oh yeah it's really good it's all from like, yeah and they've got some other pieces from different brands too. And they have like five identical Panado leg curls actually, like lined up in front of each other. So, you know, you never and then they have the one arsenal. Thing. And they got the one arsenal, which I appreciate. I love that arsenal. Which one? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Maybe I know is the leg extensions. They have the one arsenal leg extension. So I like the Panado one. Cutting out, Stu. You're cutting out a lot. Dude. Yeah, your t-shirts as they lay dying, and your microphones as they lay dying. <laughs> sick t-shirt though. I want to yeah, to it is a sick like, t-shirt. I was gonna Dubai? say. What's that? How was Dubai? I went. I, I'm so curious about going to Dubai. I yeah, Dubai. No Dubai is cool, man. You you'd love it there because you you travel around quite a bit, right? Yeah. So yeah, if you haven't been to Dubai, it's a different experience. Especially for bodybuilders, I feel like it's it's like a new kind of like hub for bodybuilding just because a lot of the people there are really, really, really into it and they have money to invest. So there's a lot more like opportunity and stuff um, in terms of like just strictly like bodybuilding and fitness, especially if you're a personal trainer or something like that. And like that's your life, that's your lifestyle, like training people like, you know, morning till night, then it's like that's the perfect place because there's rich people, right? So you can have a really strong clientele. Um, and, and really grow your business that way. But at the same time, there's opportunity everywhere. It just depends on if that's what fits your lifestyle. And that's like your vibe, right? It's a good vibe. It's just, I mean, I love being at home too. I love pure muscle, right? So it's hard to be like, it's it's, it's definitely there's pros and cons, right? Yeah, on well, both, so. I just feel like life balance there isn't, isn't a thing. It just seems to me like a place you go work and spend money. I don't know. Like, I'm not a party guy. I'm not like a you know spending money all the time guy. I like beach, you know, like like mountains. <laughs> so Canada is like perfect. Mountain me. country. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like to me, Dubai. But I still want to. I, I wonder like how it is. I've heard like everything is so expensive though, like even to eat because the currency is fucked up. I think it's it's all relative though. Like it depends on like like what are you buying exactly? Like if you're trying to go to malls and buy like Gucci, yeah, you're gonna pay for that, but. You know what I mean? If you're just going to go there and, like, bodybuild, you know, especially if you have, like, American or, or um, like, if you have U.S. currency, right? Like, that's more valuable. So. Yeah, it's a hard time to be traveling with a Canadian dollar. 
It is exactly that's that's better just to like travel within Canada. If you want to go on a vacation, <laughs> stay in Canada. Or go out to the West Coast or go down to the Caribbean or something where your Canadian dollars will like. Or go to Brazil, man. <laughs> I'd love to go to Brazil. Honestly, I'd yeah. love to that one day. That'd be awesome. Yeah, Brazil is super cheap right now. But I mean, the last couple of years I've been in between Canada and Brazil because I don't have a residency, so I can only spend like six months at a time. Yeah. Which means I usually go during summer and then like after summer's over, I just leave. Um what's the best city to visit in Brazil? Again, it depends on your lifestyle. So most people will tell you Sao Paulo. Right. Personally, I don't like Sao Paulo at all. Okay. Sao Paulo and take no offense in on what I'm gonna say, but like Sao Paulo is comparable to Toronto. Oh, okay. Like me, I'm just not like the tall buildings and like gray kind of guy. You know, like I like nature. Like nature, like ocean, like mountains. So to me, being in Toronto or Sao Paulo is sort of shit. Especially, obviously, Toronto is still like a uh, still has a civilization. Like in Sao Paulo, you, you're gonna see like a lot of poverty depending on where you go. It can be dangerous depending on where you go. It is worth the trip. Um, but if you do plan on going to Brazil, I wouldn't choose Sao Paulo as the main place to go. Like Rio, there's a, a lot of beaches. Um, my city has a lot of beaches. <laughs> Yeah, you can go around and like have a fun time, especially like when you make Canadian or American dollars, man. Like you're rich there. Right on. Where are you from in Brazil? Um, uh, it's from the, from a town called Salvador. It's like in the northeast. Okay. It's actually where Portugal first landed when we got to Brazil. So it's by the beach. Uh, my family has a very good condition there. You know, like financially speaking, like we have more than me. Um, but it just gave up on the family's company to bodybuild, pretty much. So I only coach and. And compete now but to me uh next year i have been thinking about maybe spending more time in the us um yeah. i just can't figure out where yet because chicago i loved it man the city you there like is, chicago i loved it i hate what do you love about chicago the lake resembles uh, like the fucking ocean dude <clears throat> You know, it's like you in the city, you like everything is organized. Peace. I think you would love probably like Colorado and stuff like that. So this is the like, point. Like Montana. I have been speaking to a couple of people that I know, like wondering where to go if I go to the US um next year. And people usually say, Well, for your lifestyle, probably Colorado would be the best bet. <laughs> but I haven't been I mean, I've been to Breckenridge back in when I was like 15 to snowboard, but other than that, I don't even know how the city is. I have yeah. no clue. Whereas in BC, which is like where I spent the the most of my life in the past years in Victoria, um, when it gets to the winter or fall, the cold doesn't bother me at all. It, does, it, it isn't even that cold. It's not, not even that cold over there. That's the thing. Like it's, no, it's bearable. Yeah. But to me, like what bothers me the most is the rain, dude. Like the rain and the grayness. Like the day the sunlight yeah. is going to start at like fucking eight or nine. If you work inside and you leave like four or five. Is already dark, and it's like raining all day. So that's like kind of depressive to me. But it's yeah. it's it's like that's the thing, dude. It's like then if you want no rain, you go to Dubai, and then there's no nature. If you want the nature, then you go to a place and there's rain. It's like there's, there's no nature without the rain, right? So yeah, but you see, this is why I've been like traveling all yeah. around. So like I spent yeah. summer in Canada, I've been summer in Brazil. This yeah, yeah, been... exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, again, I think I also you would probably love like. like You'd probably love somewhere like Tahoe or like somewhere that like it's they can like there's winter but like it's a shorter winter and there's not a, a ton of rain. It's a dry a good amount of the time. It's beautiful up there too. I love Tahoe. Yeah, yeah. well, I've heard Florida is also a good place and apparently it's growing a lot with bodybuilding there. Like Honey is there, yeah. Derek is there, like Flex was there. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I'm still figuring out, but. I don't know, like something is telling me that Denver is gonna be where I'm gonna like stay for a couple of months. How's What's the body the gym they have in Denver? They have like they have armburst pro gym. Yeah. Is that yeah. yeah. Well, I mean armburst is I think an hour and a half away from Denver or something like okay. that. That's okay. kind of yeah. far. Yeah. Well, you probably want to yeah. kind of be like outside the city a little bit anyway, like especially this guy wants to be in the mountains, so it'll probably be great yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. So like when I was in Victoria now, I was staying at my friend's house. He doesn't even live in Victoria, he lives in Langford, which is like a 15 to 30 minute drive on the highway, depending on tra on how traffic is to Victoria. So we would go like spend my day in Victoria, train and whatnot at Truth. Truth is a really good gym. I'm not sure if um 
all these yeah, I've been there. I've been there. I did a yeah, seminar there, there back in like 2021. Yeah, the vibe is really good. The owner Andrew is really, really cool. He's also a bodybuilder. So we'd go there, we'd take like 15 minutes, and when I wanted to go home, I would go back to Langford. There's no noise. It's like you're gonna see like signs saying like be careful with the bear, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of vibe that I'm more into, especially because I coach from home. Like I'm, 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 I work as an online coach, uh, for the most part, so I can be anywhere. But again, like I, I just take advantage of the situation that I can, I can be anywhere and like just go around like meeting places, you know. So that's kind of like I'm, I live in Columbus, Ohio, and everyone's like, "You live in Ohio? That sucks." Like Columbus sucks. And I'm like, yeah, I mean downtown. Like there's some stuff to do downtown. So if you come to Arnold, that's where everybody judges it on. I live like 20 minutes outside the city and we call it our bubble because we love it. So peaceful. Like it's the perfect for like, it's perfect for our lifestyle. Like we love our little home. and Like it's not a, like, you know, we have back roads right next to us and there's peace here. And then yeah, we can be 20 like. minutes in the city and into all the stuff. You know what I mean? It's, it's nice being this like right where we're at. Yeah. That's like the best <laughs> worlds for sure. That's that's like where we are too. Like and that's why I like where Pure Muscle is because it's it's about forty five minutes or an hour away from downtown Toronto, but it's more like it's the burbs. Like it's just you know it's it's there's more nature. It's peaceful. You don't you go you go forty five minutes an hour into downtown, and now you're dealing with road rage and just people that suck. And it just it's night and day, right? So yeah, yeah. I mean your your environment's everything, man. Like that's where it you is. drive. That's where you grow. Like. You know, if you're in a negative environment, it doesn't matter like how hard you try to push yourself or how hard you work. I mean, you're not going to thrive and be your best, right? And oh, also, yeah. it, it makes it harder to meet more of those like-minded people. Like if you go somewhere like Texas, you go somewhere like Tampa where other people like you are, I mean, you're going to have more opportunities. You're going to have training partners. You're going to have, you know, things, new doors that open up for you. So, you know. Yeah, to me, like balance is like is really really important, and that's something I've learned. I've learned a lot last year, on my year, like as a natural, you know, like back in the yeah. day, um, I I remember like even times that I actually regret. Like for example, I lived for a couple of months in London, and I was like deep in the off season, um, so like I could potentially eat whatever I wanted at that point. My dad went to visit me. Uh, and like, I remember we went to a restaurant and I brought my Tupperware with me, like my food. Um, and I could eat in the steak in a restaurant, but like, I wanted to be on the plan for mm -hmm. when I didn't even have like any idea when I was going to compete again. And as, as this food arrives, I open my bag, I take mine, uh, when the, the, the waitress says, well, you can't have this here. I go outside and I eat mine, like on the street while my dad has his meal inside and when I look back and I think about it, just fucking hell, like, what have I done? Like, I've lost a couple of moments, but, I, you know, it wouldn't be any issue with my offseason at all. I mean, with my progress at all. And then I just started realizing the more balance you manage to have. And, like, again, balance doesn't mean not dieting uh, to be on with someone, or to like, you know, leaving one or the other. You can do both. Um, and don't fucking, you know, like, uh, miss the point of the plan. And that's like something like it's been really important to me, like as I travel, cause like we, we like the feeling of being home, like with our own pots, like even in on the kitchen and like when we travel is always so weird. Uh, I would be like, so attached to the log books. Whenever I went to a different gym, I wouldn't even have a good workout cause I was like, wow, this leg press is different. This extension is different. I'm not going to kill myself here where nowadays I'm like, well, fuck the logbook for now. I'm just going to have fun and like kill myself. I just too sad. He did when he went with his buddies to Texas. Right. So like yeah. learning how to enjoy the environment and still keep up with the plan just gave me such more like be able to progress, you know, do you guys think that there is, do you guys balance. think that there is balance? I mean, I feel like if you want to be like, the best bodybuilder it's not even really a balance anymore you just it's basically just your whole life but it's sustainable I mean, because you, you, you dexter, love what you do dexter used to finish up uh the olympian take off for like three months that's what most yeah, people yeah. did actually like, I, think, like, I think maybe maybe getting to size is more of the issue you, you have to be in like you have to always be eating six times a day mm -hmm. always be hitting a certain amount of protein 
Um, I do think there's a bit of obsessiveness, especially in open. That's a, it takes away a little bit more balance, but I do think, yeah, I think without balance, at least some, you're going to lose everybody in your life. You're not going to make it anyways. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, True. I, agree. I mean, there are certain times where like, I'm sorry, but if you didn't take your girl on a date yet, like, what are you doing, bro? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you know very true. Yeah. There, there needs to be a balance, right? Yeah. Cause you, you yeah. like you said, you'll lose people. You guys hear me? Yeah. Everything, you know? yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're good. Oh, thank God. Okay. Um, I moved. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, you, you said something important there. Like if you want to be the best bodybuilder, like, none of us are going to win the Mr. Olympia in all likelihood. Right. So like, I don't, I compared to a couple of years ago, I'm interested in being a very good bodybuilder and being about 95%, like 95% of the time. Right. Uh, not being a hundred percent of the time, but like a hundred, you know, because I, I do want to enjoy my life a bit now on paper. I am not as good of a compet, like uh, as good of a bodybuilder, as I was like four years ago, you know, I do miss meals every once in a while, you know, uh, but I also kind of, kind of have gotten to a cruising speed now where like, like a lot of us here, like we're kind of big enough to be competitive at a high enough level. Right. Um, and it's not just going to fall off you. I mean, fucking hell, look at what Quentin did all summer. Like Quentin hasn't been like on his game, on his game for months. And he still looks crazy. I mean, albeit he's Nigerian, but like, you know you you can get away with a bit of shit you just have to like lock it in when the time comes when uh when it's time to like prep for a show but i think being 90 percent in the off season you're not really leaving a ton on the table enjoy some food man yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what you're gonna do add, add a little bit of extra fat and you make a memory with your people i don't know to me it's just not yeah. like I, i've been perfect and i've gotten fat being perfect too so like <laughs> I, I don't perfect for a year, year and a half long. Like I, I think it's the ability to like pick your days, right? Like if you if yeah. you know you're gonna go off track, like you have an event come up with your friends or you go out for a night with your girl and like stay at a hotel after and like you miss a meal or something. I think it's just that have the ability to like the next day get like right back on point, like right back to your six meals, you know, have the ability like have the awareness too to like move your training around so that if you have to take an extra rest day, you put in the effort to make up that training day like later in the week so that like you make time for the balance, but that making time for balance doesn't turn into like a week or two weeks of just like, you know, losing time where you could be making gains. Right. And even that being said, like, there's also nothing wrong with just taking a whole week off going on vacation. Cause like Stu, you just mentioned, you just mentioned Quentin. A lot of times I think like we are just taught to think that that's bad, but in all reality, like just taking a week off, like a week away from the sport, a week away from training and eating like a bodybuilder, Sometimes that can refresh you so much mentally that allows you to put a lot more effort when you come back into it and and get results from that. Like I, I've had that experience before. Like I've had times where I felt like I was fucking up. When I get back in the gym and get back to my diet, I have like better pumps, like my strength is better. I'm motivated to be in the gym. And then I'm like two or three months on a tear of progress because I gave myself like three or four days to just like enjoy my life a little bit, right? Yeah. It was like a, a forced deload. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I... I've been running into this. I've been needing to do like a proper deload week for like since the show, basically since, uh, since Vancouver, I've been traveling a much. I just kind of haven't gotten around to it. When I travel, I train with people I like and I go really hard and yeah, it just hasn't happened, you know? So like, yeah, I, I I'm doing it. I'm doing a deload this week and I, I'm like, I'm going to train like three times this week. Cause I know if I go in, I'm going to like get carried away. Cause that's, that's what we like to do. You know, it's, it's hard to go 70% in the gym. Um, if you enjoy training. So I'm just not going to let myself go to the gym for a few days this week um, yeah. and force myself to take a break because I need it. Dude, I, I really bet like <laughs> taking this break is actually going to make you gain even more once you're back. Like yeah, your mind well, is going to be there. Your body is going to be like fresh and ready to actually put on even more size. I truly believe it. I feel like, yeah. I mean, I feel beat to shit right now. Like I, yeah. my pressing numbers are crap. Like, a lot of, I don't, I'm not getting pumps like I should. It, it can tell I need it. Right. So, um, I don't want to do it, but I'm just forcing it on myself. So being a good bodybuilder is like having the ability to make that call, you know, because yeah. it's like, what's the point in training? If you're pressing less than like you were like, you know, two or three weeks out from a show, for example, like, you know, you're not doing anything to improve your body. 
Yeah. So you're just you're just beating yourself up and like and and building up that fatigue even more, which is even more that you have to recover from. Yeah, yeah like something that is like uh, very cool to talk about is like most of us nowadays, I believe we all do like blasting crews for the most part, and there's like what's believed uh, to work better physiologically. It is what makes more sense, but I do feel like sometimes if we just like don't pin at all for like over a month, like just like let the body breathe. You know, like science apart, it does seem to me that like once you get back to it, you respond like so much better. Instead of like being on a forever, like non-ending, like blasting cruise, like give yourself a couple weeks or months, even. Um, that just... might be true, Marcelo. Mm -hmm. But that? I'm that might be true, but I'm yeah, not gonna it. test that out. Oh, I'm I'm not not it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not for me, bro. Five days, I feel like that fucking don't even have a weenie yet. <laughs> Oh, dude, like, I, I just, it's just like when I look at some people that I look up for, like, pretty much old school people, because people now, they don't do it at, at all anymore. Like, it just seems to me like the best bodybuilders we had used to do it all the time. And it just works somehow, you know? Yeah, I, uh, you're, you're right. Like, I'm, I'm joking, man. Like, just coming off for like a month and a half, like, not even TRT, no growth hormone, no nothing. Like, it would be a pretty, shocking snapshot of what your body actually looks like when it's not full of all these hormones and you know full yeah. and pumped and crazy all the time right but realistically if you're still eating a lot of food you're not going to lose much if any tissue yeah. uh, like i think people really overthink that man you're not at risk for losing muscle tissue unless your protein's super low and you're in a huge deficit and you're super lean you know, <laughs> yeah, all like you have to like cross off all the boxes and fuck up everything, right? To lose tissue, like at, 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 at the end of a prep, it's dangerous because mm. you're really lean and a little more fragile. I think that's when you need to worry about it. But I mean, you can get fuck. I've been I've been prepping some of the guys like this. I'm I'm getting aggressive with their diets at the beginning of the prep at like 12 weeks out. And then by like six or seven weeks out, we got like three quarters of the work done. And then we can fine tune things and it gets interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. But like pull them out, like get a chunk of fat off. They're not going to lose tissue, even if their calories are pretty low in that time frame, because they're still covered in fat. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. um, it's a literal cushion against muscle loss. Um, and then you, you get really lean, you ramp up your gear a little more, you start, you know, playing with high and low days and stuff. And that's how you get the last bit off carefully. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's it's normal. Like we fret about getting small, but it's not really gonna happen. Well, you hear about these guys that like retire that like you know are trying to lose muscle and like yeah. they struggle with it. Like these guys are like eating nothing, like going for runs, and they're just like, yeah, I'm like stuck at like two six. Not even pinning for months. Like just oh yeah, yeah. I forgot I forgot to pin for three weeks or four weeks, whatever. It's like yeah. When you're not when you're not stressed yeah. about it, you, you really realize like as long as you actually I think a lot of us we don't really have the, the genetics to just like not not take anything and not train and eat like shit and then just try to make like a huge like Kevin Lavroni comeback. I don't think we would no. do that well trying to do that, but but coming off, if you're still eating a bodybuilding diet and training like a bodybuilder, you're gonna look relatively the same. You're just gonna be maybe a little bit softer. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, like your body composition might be different, but you won't be any less muscular. It's more well, as like if you drop GH, like once I drop GH, what I feel is like the roundness. Yeah, the yeah, you will lose the roundness. And same thing when you drop test too. Yeah, so. it's more so like the, the roundness, you know, like the yeah. format. So when, like, I, when, when I drop really everything like, out, oh. I'll, I'll drop everything out. Like I, I, I did. Benoit was like, "Okay, I want you to like drop everything for like." 12 weeks and this is like years ago maintain like 260 like natural and then if you can do that then like you know that's good obviously like 260 quote-unquote natural is like pretty big but i swear i was just getting like everybody was asking me if i was a wrestler like i, I didn't look like a bodybuilder very much anymore so <laughs> you know <laughs> just out of curiosity uh what's your guys like trt dosages like when you were like in a cruise phase i like 250 yeah, 250 a week 250 a week, yeah, for TRT, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I've the, actually been... I go higher. I like the 375. What's that? I, I like mine a little bit higher. I like, like, 375. 375? I've actually been pretty good about this, and, like, I've actually stayed on, like, 200 or 250 
during my cruises. Um, yeah. I like I'm tempted to like throw some primo in or something like that, but <laughs> again, you know, if it's five or six weeks of a break, my blood work comes back great. You know, you can get right back to it. You're just losing some fullness and pop and some of the look that you have. I, I keep growth hormone in uh, yeah. at the same dose as always. Uh, sometimes I'll keep insulin in as well if I'm not too fat. Um, That's if you if you're cruising on test with GH and Slim, you really don't lose shit. You can actually grow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't think I'm not losing even much. Though. <laughs> well, I so the reason I keep those things in is because, like, for me at least, I keep my blood pressure under control. My kidney numbers are always good. The thing that's always been an issue for me is cholesterol, and I've got that controlled with some medications and supplements now. Um, so, like, they might be a little out of range when I get my blood work done, like, right after a show or right after a big blast. So, by the end of five or six weeks, it's gone again. But, you know, GH and insulin are not going to be affecting those. Yeah. Um, now, maybe they are pro-inflammatory, and that all is going to kind of affect your your cholesterol to some extent, right? Um, but generally my numbers get, get right back in range by the end of a break like that and I'm good to go again. So, yeah. and what, so what insulin, like, what insulin will you use for like a, a TRT phase, just like a humalog, like post-workout or pre-workout or something? Yeah. I've only ever done pre-workout humalog. And then typically I use Lantus when I'm eating a shitload. So like, typically I'm not, I don't really need lantis during a cruise because my food probably isn't super high um and you also have to keep in mind like when you pull out all those androgens oh, you're really? gonna you're gonna reduce your insulin sensitivity a bit right because they have an inherently sensitizing effect on all your muscle cells so uh you, i've actually seen my blood sugars creep up when i drop to a cruise and keep my food the same my gh the same everything else the same mm -hmm. um so sometimes i have to bring my food down a little bit and if you have if you have low insulin sensitivity and you're just at high blood sugars and you're just kind of band-aiding it with with Lantus, that's a good way to get fat. Yeah. You know, personally I I I use Lantus when my blood sugars are high because my food is super high. If if I use it because my if my if my blood sugars are getting high due to, you know, excessive fat or, you know, bad insulin sensitivity because of growth hormone, then you need to address one of those things. Cause like you'll lower your blood sugars, but you're, you're going to start storing a bunch of body fat yeah. and then the problem gets even worse and it compounds on itself. So it's not just a fix all, you know, when that problem arises, you got to figure out why is it arising? Is it a ton of food or am I getting too fat? Am I taking too much growth hormone? You know, and you can kind of see if that's a good idea or not. Yeah. 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 What about, um, what about Traceba? You ever tried that stuff? It's like a even longer acting, more flatlined Lantus. Oh, it's an insulin. Oh, uh, I so, yeah. no, I've heard of a Pedra. That's a fast one. Like Cumalog. Yeah. But no. Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks about Traceba a lot. Like she's like a huge fan because she was like really into the Lantus before. Um, but now she's like all about Traceba, but apparently it's like more or less the same thing. It's just a, better version more it's even more stable i guess hmm. so. let me guess it's uh it's still under patent and it's very very expensive <laughs> i don't know that's the thing oh. is because uh in canada insulin is actually pretty cheap like relatively oh cheap. right yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not here not at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we can get it over the counter here i don't think you guys can can you literally you can over get, the counter you can yeah. get walmart you insulin know. which is like uh Huma, Huma Rap, yeah, it's Novel and R, yeah. Novel Rapid, Novel and R, yeah. It's the Walmart yeah. brand. Is that, is that like long acting? Is that, What's that? That? is that like a long acting insulin? It's like, it's like eight hours, six to eight yeah. hours. R is a double peak. Yeah, they have Humulin R, double peak, eight hours or something like that. And then they have, uh, it's like a two and then a four. And then they have a Humulin N, which is like a longer multiple peak and then yeah then they have the nova rapid yeah it, i mean yeah. personally nova rapid is just nova log right nova rapid is like the foreign version of nova log nova log Cuma log i think they're all relatively the, pretty much the same yeah yeah but i mean the stuff they sell at walmart over the counter it's like 
it's it's not really that good for what we're doing. You could do a better job with Humalog for like pre and post workout or Lantis for like over the whole day. I'm pretty sure Anything. even in, in Canada, your, your food's crazy high, and like you have a lot of sugars pre and post too. You could do like a a ten IU or like a twelve IU Lantis hmm. at night, and then like an eight IU to twelve IU whatever pre workout. I don't like post workout personally. Um, I don't like pre workout. I I only yeah, I like post workout. Post-workout. Yeah, Same, I do. I do the Lantis in the morning, and then the Humalog post workout, and that's been yeah. working really well for me. Yeah, but I do like I do like six I use a Humalog post workout. Like I don't go crazy with it because I find once I go like the ten to fifteen range with the Humalog, that's when I start getting fat. I like six to eight. Like Lantis, six to eight. If you're one hundred to one hundred twenty, I think it's perfect. Go ahead, Stu. Sorry. Oh no! Yeah. Do basically like Lantis hate your appetite at all? It helps it actually. Yeah, I, don't yeah, I feel worse when I, I when I used it. I felt worse. Like my stomach was like full all day for whatever reason. What do you use, what do you use it with? Do you have to have like oral or something? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I never really do any orals on the off season. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just like a personal thing. But like with uh fast insulin, I just I I love it, man. I could do it like every meal if I could, but I never did it. Yeah. Um, like something I wanted to ask you guys because it's actually something people from Brazil ask me to ask you guys. Um. Do you guys feel like when you when you want to be like an open bodybuilder, you have to like start off with like really high dosages to get to a point, and from that point you can lower it? No, dude. Or it's like you can go like no. Super no, 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 no. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Yeah, right. You it's start like, low and you work right, your way right. up. Yeah, that's what I always thought. I, I'd always like to disagree good. there. I'll speak for myself at least. I started pretty high because I was listening to the wrong people uh, when I started. Uh, and my doses haven't really gone up that much over the last four or five years. Um, but I, I mean, I'll, I, I took less drugs this year in prep than I have any other year. And I've, I was my biggest, uh, my off season was pretty similar to usual, but, um, I, I mean, I think when you, like, by the time I'm 29 or 30, I do want to be taking lower doses overall. Um, especially during, you know the off season. I mean, prep, you got to ramp things up a little bit, but like I got away with like significantly less than I usually do. Like the highest my trend went this year is 350. It's usually 500 or something. So I still think that you need to start low if you were just starting to take it. That's smart. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I would just, I would just start low just to see if you can handle it. That's basically like the only reason I would say is like, and even like for me, I had like a weird start because I got told to take 500 milligrams of DECA and just start with that. So I did that, but at least I like I could see what happened to me with just the DECA. Like it was yeah. pretty obvious. Oh, this is what DECA does. Right. And then the next time I tried DECA with test, I'm like, oh, this is what DECA does with test. You know what I mean? If I took everything, I'd be like, holy fuck, what the fuck is going on? You know, That's- it's too it's too much to know like how it affects your body because you actually don't have that like ability to decipher the different compounds within your own body yet right so it'd be like an overload i feel like but then again if you just went gung-ho from the start you got a coach and they were like okay we're starting your first prep you know all in you know you start like a trend mass test cycle like and you gave it 100 percent. i'm sure you have great results too so i think it's um it's just like how disciplined dedicated consistent how hard you work train and diet when you actually are on and when you're off, but yeah. if you decide to I start, a lot of, I think it's a lot of personal, like, like, why do you love this too? Because for me, man, the science part of bodybuilding was always the fascinating part. So, like, I experimented on myself. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I started with just tests, and then I did test and Debo, and then I did a prep with just Clan, and then threw test and Tren in, and then put EQ, like, you know, just played with stuff for probably three or four years in college like like i didn't know what i was doing i could barely afford it i would other people would want it (laughs) so i would like overcharge them so that everyone going in the order would pay for my gear then i would just fuck this stuff you know what i mean (laughs) and (laughs) and like i mean it was fun and i don't know if you don't but not everybody has a brain like that not everybody like i knew i wanted to coach at some point like i knew that i just wanted to learn and have fun like i wrote research papers for college writing classes because I had a really cool college writing professor that was like, dude, I want to learn this stuff. But <laughs> so like, it was a lot of fun for me, but some people don't want to do that. I'd still do your research and understand what you're putting in your body. But some people 
they just want to be the athlete and they just want to do the work and just do, you know what I mean? Do the process and they don't really care what does what or how, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that the novelty is worn off at this point though? Cause like you, what you're probably at least 10 years into bodybuilding, right? Brady. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like you've kind of tried everything. Yeah. But I mean, I, I guess I still, there's still new things. There's always new stuff. Like last year was the first time I went over 10. I used the GH and that was the greatest thing on the face of the planet. Do not try yeah. it. But, Bro, I've been on that. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about you. I mean, kids <laughs> especially. I was taking like 16, pretty much, a lot of the last year. Oh wow! And okay, I haven't done that much. That's that's, that's so much. <laughs> the pump, dude, you literally you walk up the stairs in the morning, and you're like like already entirely pumped. Like <laughs> that's awesome. It, what weird. about side effects from it? I didn't get a lot, honestly. I handle growth really well. I get really Dude. bad sides from things like trend and other and NPP yeah. growth. Besides, like falling asleep driving, like I'm, I was cool. Yeah, more, more growth is always good. Again. It was great, but I'll never do it again. Uh, you're you're right though. There's always something new, and man, like fucking Dominic was trying to send us home with some stuff. Uh, he's like, oh yeah, I try this. Gave me like 10 bottles. I'm like, how am I supposed to get this back? I'm going to have to leave this here. <laughs> no, there's no chance I'm bringing these back. Uh, well, like, I haven't tried IGF yet. I would love to try direct IGF at some point. You know, I would love to try uh, just different combinations of stuff. Um, look, I think, I think the LR3 could be worthwhile to do once in a while just because it's like, you know, if you want to have like more muscle cells, you can potentially proliferate. A whole bunch before you were or like in the early beginning phases of your cycle like first four weeks yeah. but i mean it's just like a kind of a super magnified gh like to get more igf1 you don't really want to be doing that like long term but you could definitely do it for like four weeks kind of spike that igf potentially get more muscle cells and then fucking blow them the fuck up with the rest of your cycle that's that's probably what i would do and do that maybe once a year like you know what i mean like don't go crazy with it well, theoretically, too, that's kind of that wasn't like the long term plan of running 16. But like, theoretically, like, I'm gonna over the next year, I could run four. And I'm still gonna add an insane amount of muscle tissue, just from what I did in the last year. You know oh, what I mean? Way, when you were in the I use was it pharma grade or underground or mix? Farm, yeah, Gina Pen, uh, Gina Triple. Yeah, yeah, I don't like, like, so like, like that. What's that? <laughs> You flex on us like that. <laughs> I love Gina. I've talked about it before. I've seen it. I've seen a one in particular, one uh, Canadian IFBB pro, like back in the day, maybe ten years ago or whatever. And he he was doing the the serostims and doing eighteen a day, like a full vial serostim. And he he was the guy that was obviously he was the hookup and the link for it, right? So he had all the kits, and he was just like monstrous, dude, like like 270 on stage just like peeled just fucking massive it's such a shame that he never ended up competing as a pro because he was that fucking good but i mean I, if you, I if, if you have good. money to spend on 18 a day like you're gonna be fucking that's the problem, big. That's yeah. the problem is i took all of the extra money that i had and put it towards <laughs> growth this is not, not financial I, advice it's not <laughs> it enough not, it's, it's never it's enough not, i look back to last year and i'm like yeah. Like, dude, I could, like we could have bought a fucking house. Like, <laughs> like, for what reason could I do this? Uh, no, 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 tell no, the story. Yeah, so in crazy. some countries, boring, like in Brazil, you can't do that. Like, it's so, super easy to. I, I I just got like five kits of genotropin yesterday because my friend brought it from where, and where we get from the pharmacy straight, so it's all legal and all. Um, and but like, you remember, personally, dude, you like, you know. look at this. So I had in both hands, I had to do a carpal tunnel surgery because I ran like five IUs. Uh, so yeah, like my carpal tunnel thing is a, is a really issue for me. But now I had the surgery, I can handle twice as much. But in the off season, it always hits. Pre contest, I never feel it. So it's probably like a water retention thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But I just hate it. But I wish I could try and like run a fucking whole pen, you know, <laughs> of uh, of don't, don't the three six I use I a day. Care have the money just don't uh, trust me get a new car or something it's not that worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it right it yeah well, i tried it i'll ne I'm, i don't regret anything i've ever tried crazy or not i'm very happy that i 
because I would I don't want to wonder what if. Like I don't want to be like, could I have been the greatest bodybuilder ever if I just went a little bit higher? So like <laughs> I tried it. If I don't become the greatest bodybuilder, it's not because of that. <laughs> yeah. And now yeah. I know I'll never want to do that again. I'll never spend mm-hmm. that money. I probably run eight for the rest of my life, honestly. And like uh what do you guys think about like those new trends? Well, at least in Brazil, it is a trend now. One of them is like, well, there's three new trends in Brazil. Because people, the thing is, the, the training culture in Brazil is really weak. So people want to make up with like with drugs. And obviously it doesn't happen, but still. So one of the trends like DECA base or DECA only, which you, you did, trend, <laughs> not even knowing that it was a thing, apparently. Then it was like DHD base, uh, which I tried and I hated it. And one in the third one is like trash to loan. Like now Brazil is going crazy about trash to loan. I never even <laughs> touched it. I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, I don't one. even I don't think any pros actually use that to be honest, man. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know used any. it. So no. I've used it and I started off too high. I, I, I put in like 350 a week right off the bat, which is too much. You should take half that, and that's still a lot. I got super strong. I put on like eight pounds in a week, and then my my nipple started hurting immediately. Okay. Um, so like, and I was like, it, it took me from like 286 up to like 295 just in a week. Um, and it was all like full, it was super full, but like so much water attention. Like I could legit barely wipe my ass. It was horrible. <laughs> I couldn't move. I was so tight and sore. Uh, and you know, I'm probably not going to use that drug again until I get gyno surgery. Cause I'm pretty sensitive to to nipple stuff, and um, yeah, it, it it did me did me dirty. <laughs> and I was, you know, you can take as many AIs as you want on it; it's still going to cause you problems if you have your glands still in. So, it's yeah. uh, it wasn't it wasn't good for it, me. But I don't think I'm going to try to use it. I I just don't see a point to it. You got to like, make a weight is... cap, man. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely like, don't so... do that. My experience, because well, well, most I mean, not most guys. There's a lot of people doing like primo or mass base nowadays. Um, and I tried it, because like John Jewett was doing it, like Jordan Peters was doing it. I was like, well, I'm gonna give it a shot. So I ran up to 1.4 grams of primo in 600 test. But man, it was like the worst experience I've ever had. Like, like after, was that? Probably crashed your ass. Dude, like so yeah. first and. That sounds super stupid, but like I went with my girlfriend to watch Barbie and I cried watching it. <laughs> yeah, dude. But the worst was the training. Like the joints. I'm not even impressed. <laughs> dude, like the joints were fucked up. Because the, really? the primo pharma grade primo, so it's real primo. Like the estrogen was like probably at one or two. I don't even know. It was like fucked up. Uh Sex drive zero. So I really don't understand how those people get away with like DHB DHT base. Um, maybe I it was think, just like a me thing, but no, never again. Yeah, everyone's gonna respond to it differently. Like some yeah. people can take a gram of test and they don't need any aromatase inhibitors. I got friends like that, they're good. I, I'd need like a bunch of aromacin on that, right? So everyone's different, but I'm I'm really intrigued by that. I like I kind of want to try it. Um obviously primo is expensive which is annoying but it's it's tempting you know because like those are li- like masteron and primo are really low side effect drugs yeah uh, so like if it works obviously it worked for john john was using a shitload of masteron <laughs> like yeah. if you go and look at his like he was using a shitload of masteron yeah. um but i don't know it's like what if you know brady like like well, you were saying <laughs> I like all I like I like all three test trend or not uh test uh primo and mass. Like I think that's just, what I do. It's like the trifecta, man, you know. Like, that's my cycle right now, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That's a go-to for me because I just I'm at the point with bodybuilding where I just want to use stuff that like I don't feel shitty on. Yeah. And I've been yeah. like uh like 12 years now. And I've used most things. And for me, I can put on size, I can keep good blood work on test primo mast. A lot of GH, a lot of insulin, that works, and I don't have to deal with like any mental side effects. I don't have to deal with any bad physical side effects. I barely have to take any aromatization inhibitors, and I'm like three thirty eight with like abs. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. How tall are you, man? That's uh, I'm six two. Okay. Jesus. 
that's the thing, right? It's like a, a lot of people are like, hey, I want to try this. But I mean, if you already know, like this works for me, like why do you need to try something? Yeah, I'm not like that at all. Like I, I don't get like influenced by like any of these, this like new shit coming out. Cause like, I honestly just always think back to like the bodybuilders in the nineties and like the two thousands and like what they had to work with. And they had some like the biggest and craziest physiques ever. And like their stacks were like super, super simple. So that's yeah. kind of the mind I like to keep. Yeah. Like, and dude, like even like peptides, like peptides were, they were around like 15 years ago, just that nobody was talking about them. And people that did, they said that they were bullshit, but also now it's like the technology is better. So really the only, the only like new stuff is like more like longevity stuff. That's really coming out in terms yeah. of like getting, like, getting to like the freakiest, biggest bodybuilder. Like, we pretty much have everything. <laughs> we just listed basically everything in this one conversation. You know, <laughs> it's, not, it's not like there's anything else that we're going to stumble upon that all of a sudden now we can get to 400 plus pounds. Like that's I just, what I mean. It's like, how much yeah. is like, how much is this new if, drug? If like, to let me know. Yeah. You like, know? Oh, there's, now there's a myostatin inhibitor. It's like, no dude, like if you don't have the genetics, like, I don't care how much myostatin you inhibit. <laughs> and also, yeah. like, even from like a health standpoint, though, like, like a lot of this new stuff coming out, like, we don't know what like long term usage does. And like, yeah. I don't want to sound like a pussy, but like, it's something you have to consider. Like, we put a lot of shit in our bodies. Yes, we're trying to make our muscles grow, but you can make your heart grow. You can mess up your, your liver. You can mess up your kidneys. Yeah. So these these are just things I consider. So in my mind, I'm like, I know for me, the longer I can be a healthy bodybuilder, the better I'm gonna be like the better I'm eventually going to be able to do on stage. You can blast all the shit you want. And maybe you do get a really good result in the short term, but if your career ends when you're 33, you're probably not going to get very far. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's how I see it too. Yeah. So Stu, I had a question for you. Where, where does your E2 usually sit whenever you start feeling sensitive? I don't even t test it. Honestly, I, I don't, I don't really care about what the number is. Uh, it, it, my, my, you know, sign to, control it is like are my nipples itching or achy right right, right? Yeah. so like i can typically get up to like a grandma test maybe a little higher than that and then you know even with like aromacin in there i need to start doing something about it like i can't go higher than that i've never really tried and i don't really care to um that's, that's kind of how i am too I'm, I'm very very sensitive and and then i've had clients that i've had them creep into the hundreds in the e2 and they have no sides and that's and that's ideal. They can grow a, a little bit more. like they typically those people grow faster. Yep. But that's why I was wondering because of the masteron thing. Because for me, the second I creep over seventy, even sixty five, that's right where I'm starting to feel sensitivity and like it. Go, it feels like it'll go from that straight to a hundred to where like I now have giant lumps and I'm fucking milking. Just get it cut out. Just get it cut. Uh, out. Yeah, I don't I know. Did, it's. Man. And well, in Brazil, they don't even pay for it. I don't know how the U.S. works about it, but <laughs> in the yeah, U.S., I, I it's about it. nine to twelve grand to get the surgery. Dude, like travel to Brazil, enjoy the holiday. Towards the end of it, get it done. You're gonna spend like a thousand. <laughs> let's yeah. just all go. Let's just all go visit him down there, and we'll all go. Yeah, dude, they have a house. Well, you, guys, you, you guys are all welcome. Honestly, we'll come down with, with fifteen Gino pens, and we're fucking good to go. <laughs> dude, like, so we, we were talking about Primo. Like you said, how expensive it is. So Brazil doesn't sell farmer grade primo. I mean, it sort of does, but I don't really get it there. But Paraguay, which is like the border, do you know how much like th uh, an, an actual primo farmer grade costs? Like a bottle, it's like thirty bucks. What? God yeah. damn! Fuck. Yeah, like from the pharmacy. Mm. All right, so let's that, go to Paraguay, boys. Paraguay, it is, yeah. boys. So that's where I got my <laughs> primo from. Yeah. Never thought I'd be saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know where fucking past. Paraguay I is. I don't know. I have no idea. I got to Brazil, no. apparently. It's got to be legit. It sounds similar to Parable. And... <laughs> yeah, no, no, it is. Like, like, you like, Very you close. Yeah. Right now, a video, like we have a video within the, like, the, the, the industry, you know, where we make yeah. everything, like we manufacture everything because it's legal. You know, it's, it's, we're not like doing anything illegal there. So we have like the, the, the fucking industry is crazy. Yeah. This has possibly been the most meathead conversation I think I've ever been a part of. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> hell let's, yeah. Uh, let's let's do some uh, questions and then uh, we 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 won't stay on too too much longer. Um, I have no complaints over the meathead conversation. I love gear. Love talking. Oh about yeah, it. for yeah. sure. No, this is great, boys. Dude, Paraguay um, is a tiny little country. I mean, yeah, dude. and they make all the primo, huh? Oh, Fuck, man. I'm gonna. I, I, I was actually saying you maybe. Uh, Robin can like pull uh, pull up the video on, on the share screen. 
Because there's a video like within the like oh. the actual place. You're gonna make me work. <laughs> just, just show people how it is. It's, it's it's very cool. What am I even searching? Wait, I'm gonna sing you. Okay. Well, I'll share here what I was watching. I was watching I was watching Morgan and Antoine and Frank eating some food. And you guys went and did uh, that guest posing. I have enough for the guest posing. Yeah. Did you see how good I peaked? I didn't even get to that part yet because then I had to come on the podcast here. So yeah. I have to go back. I didn't, I didn't get to see the peak. Nailed it, bro. It dried out so well. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eight weeks into TRT at like 325 pounds is fantastic. Carving up on the uh, Burger King. For now, it's fruit loops. So. What is this? Okay. So this is where we manufacture it. This is, is the primo factory. factory. <laughs> oh, the primo factory. You're, like, you're gonna see like moving forward on the video, like they have a, a room where it says like quarantine and approved. So like the gear that doesn't like pass the oh, test wow. is primo. dumb. Look at this. Yeah, you see like approved whatever. There it so, is. Yeah, man. There it is, boys. This is legal, okay? Like this is not fake or anything. This is how it actually is. Can we uh, organize a heist? You know, it's like it's, you know, it's like the cartoons. You know, it's like when they, they like go like into like the cave with all the gold. This would be like that for us. Can you imagine like the surveillance video of four of us or five of us going in there and trying to rob? So in Brazil, we you are doing like Don videos. Toretto. So you you get the you get the charger and we'll go. For okay, that. yeah, yeah. People say that all the time that I look like Vin Diesel. So, well, <laughs> I, I know this is real because my friends in Brazil have been doing the videos inside of it as well. Oh, got, like oh oral primo. We got the primo tabs. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see, dude, and like again, there's like 30 bucks for a bottle of primo pharma grade. Uh, dude, yeah, look at this. This is some serious machinery. Look at that. Mm -hmm. they, they call America the land of the free, but I'm not so sure, man. I yeah. should have this in my goddamn garage. There they are. Oh, yeah. Oxandra loans. Oh, very, very beautiful. Beautiful. That's it, train ace, man. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to organize a heist. I want to organize a sponsorship. Well, yeah. <laughs> we're work on in a Brazil, we are sponsoring all the athletes, man. I'm sponsored by Ledbear as well. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just don't use shit because Chris has me on nothing, you know? <laughs> like, if I tell you guys my cycle or not, you won't even believe it. So we wouldn't even try. Hey, I got a question. Uh, you mentioned down in Brazil, there's not like a culture of training super hard and they make up for it with drugs. Like, they try. Based on like what we've been talking about here, like, do they take more shit than people do in the States? Oh, 100%. Okay. I, I, can, I, I can show you right now. <laughs> so like, it, it is like a, a common thing to be like on a gram of trend, 200 MCGs of T3, and stuff what? like that. I would blow my fucking brains all over the wall. Why? Dude, because wow. they... <laughs> Man, so, like, just listen to this. So, even nowadays, when I live in Canada, my worst movements are dumbbell movements because my gym there, like, all the gyms in my city, and my city is a big-ass city, like, the dumbbells don't go above, like, 50 kilos, which is, like, 100 pounds. Huh? Like, most gyms, you won't be allowed. I mean, well, so... I'm not, I don't mean to, sp to speak shit of anyone because I love all Brazilian guys, but look at the, the weakest body part of like Rafael Brandão, like Horse. Their weakest body part is always the back. People there don't even deadlift at all. I haven't ever seen one of those guys deadlifting or like even like barber rowing, stuff like that. So it's just. I see Horse putting like, like fucking 2,000 pounds on a leg press though. Ooh. I'm sure there's enough, like Horse, like I'm sure there's enough weight. <laughs> I just don't know, man. Like, I feel like I doesn't. I don't think a deadlift necessarily is going to build a big back. No, I'm just like saying, like, I'm grateful yeah. for the culture yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deadlifting is hard, and that's a lot why a lot of people don't do it. So, it hey, Robin, yeah. they yeah. open this up. Uh, I'm going to send you on on AG again. I don't know if you're going to lose muscle faster or, or gain muscle faster. Just, like just two, open the link I sent you. Two grams of trend and 200. This, this is the protocol of like William Martins. Uh, you guys maybe know him. Like he's I know him. Yeah, video. he's gigantic. Yeah, look at his cycle. <laughs> I competed with William. Yeah, he's he's big, man. Okay. One of Chad's guys too, eh? Or okay. he was at one point. Well, this would be good for views. 
Yeah. <laughs> just open it up. Yeah, or it was it was like this. I'm not sure what he does right now, but yeah, but dude, who's oh he's supposed to us. Yeah, he's supposed oh, to say, okay, perhaps we should ask. Okay, <laughs> seven hundred and eight. Okay, so a gram of, of test. Uh seven hundred th- stands is all uh, Winnie. Five hundred mast. What is it? One point two, two grams oh, trend. That's oh, what? Ooh. That's uh oh, I'd be in prison, bro. I would uh, easily Yo, go up. Yeah. Look at the D three. Well, look, D3. look, I mean fucking look at the results, bro. What do you think? That, that's what it like, <laughs> Grand, yeah, like, heard it here first, trend. like <laughs> yes yes the drugs work they work <laughs> look at the d3 right there like 200 mcgs oh well, also, she must be a type one that must... i know is that fedrine okay 600 t4 why dude what 900 caffeine when is that like like i hope that's like spaced out over some time the friend always like <laughs> if you go above are you gonna see the training? There's no rest, you know, at all. I don't so know like what this back, means. Chest, quads, delts, bicep, triceps, uh, hamstrings. Well, you, you don't need you don't need to rest. He probably doesn't need to rest or sleep or just all right. <laughs> you just train all day and just train I mean, all day. How do you yeah. sleep with that much trend? You know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you sleep. Know, just redlining. That's for- crazy. Oh, yeah. man. And what's again, the, like what's the most cold amount cold of caffeine, caffeine that you you guys have used in one day? Like on like a prep or like when you're really using like steps. Probably I never really think in like isolate. Like what? seven or eight hundred milligrams. Right. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't do anything at the end though. Like you, you're t- you're drinking energy drinks, and you don't feel a damn thing. Dude, yeah. the, the that Anarchy Labs like Ninja pre workout fat burner or whatever it is, one scoop is like seven hundred milligrams. <laughs> yeah. I was like, reading yeah, it. I was, I was like, like adding it up. I'm like, that doesn't make that can't be. I'm like, really? Yep. Wow. Yep. Dead ass. <laughs> I've only like uh, done two thirds of a scoop on that. It's a lot. Accidentally, you take two scoops of that, and like you're dead. You're dead. Yeah. You're yeah. gone. A gram and a half of caffeine in two scoops. That's. I'm down. I, like know, a, I feel like I'd probably come like close to maybe a gram in one day. You know. I did when I was younger. Like when I was a kid. But I not, nowadays, man. Anything over four hundred, I just feel like a crackhead and anxious as hell. Yeah. So, yeah, there's there's a fine line, right? Especially like, especially pre workout, because once you take too much pre workout, you, you get like no pump, you lose your pump. So, and well, uh, I think when it, when you're taking that much caffeine, you're probably at the end of a prep prep, and you're like flat anyway. So it's hard to say what's causing that, you know. That's true. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot though, man. I think there's way better stimulants than caffeine, you know, like. Uh, like ephedrine is great you know, i'm assuming i actually dude i was i was about to mention i i started using these every once in a while the the soft gels that you sent me oh yo i want to talk to you guys about those actually yeah well, so what are you using are you using the ascend or descend the i, I, I we, these are the ascend both. ones yeah i got both of them i haven't used the other ones but like i it's really good for helping me focus on work you know uh, mm-hmm. which is nice um, you take it like first thing in the morning, or you take it with breakfast, or how do you take it? Uh, yeah, like an hour after breakfast, like when I'm sitting down to get shit done. Um, yeah. and it's like it's helped me. I've used it a couple days last week, and it's good. So, I you know I've I use I was prescribed Adderall because I do have ADD, and um, you know it's not the best medication in the world to take all the time. So if I can find stuff to replace it, that's good. Um, I've also been using uh. That C Max nasal spray no, from nice. BioLab. I like that. Um, I like that. Uh, I've actually so it's it's pretty mild, but like you just get like more focused and like you you get into like a flow state better when you're working. Uh, it's it's not like a stimulant, right? So you're not like fucking tweaking, but yeah, I, again, you know, it helps a lot with productivity. I, I want to use all this stuff sparingly here and there and plug things in, pull them out, but. Um, that's kind of how yes. the ascend is, though. That, that's a good way to describe it. It puts you in a flow state very, very easily. Yeah, um, that's nice. The yeah. droppers, too, like we just came off the droppers, they hit a little bit faster. Yeah. But, like, if you take it pre workout, especially with the ones that hit faster, it almost the way I can describe it is that it, it, it puts you in this place of focus and like zeroed in that, like, it almost nothing else in the entire world exists for the next like two hours while you're training. Like, 
you just go into like your own world while you're training and it's just you your training partner and the music like it's like it's funny i posted on my page the last post was like making my life a movie because that's how it feels when i'm training because it's like everything is set specifically to me and not, like it's almost like you're the main character you know what i mean yeah yeah um i love it and it's a clean energy you don't crash um you know just start low dose and work up until you find your dose it's usually one will do people well too for the bigger guys sometimes um but and then the descents do whenever you take the descent try it to sleep it's in, if you have, especially if you're having any trouble with sleep yeah it's amazing amazing I'm sleeping good right now thank god <laughs> yeah. i need it i would too, I, would, so. I would i would save it until you start like the second you have any kind of trouble sleeping for any for any reason okay it, it'll immediately fix it yeah. I, I see it just like blowing up like everybody's using, using kratom for different reasons i've seen like nick walker using it like pre-cardio i saw you brady using it like you know before you train and still using it in the morning to focus well I, I, everything tra- everything in moderation right because yeah yeah exactly if you yeah. overdo this shit it can be addictive or at least habit forming right Absolutely. so i don't use it every day uh, you know like i i would use a little bit of the kratom shots before uh, leg training sometimes like but i typically don't do it on most other days so what, what so and, and it's before? funny Stu, um, real quick but Stu, it's, last time we talked you asked me what my dosage when i was taking a bunch more yeah since then down? well because when i started i was uneducated and oh, so okay. and on top of that i had done shit in the past so like i immediately like wasn't feeling it as much and since then, I've been able to, like, pull it down and literally lower my tolerance while keeping it in just by, like, using it two days, pulling it back out. Take You know what I mean? And just kind of, like, almost weaning down, lowering, lowering, lowering. And it just, like, made me almost more sensitive to it continuously. I'm now to the point where I can take two ascent and I feel like I did whatever I was taking, like, six or whatever. Like, yeah. so it, it's, like he said, it's all the moderation and, like, you control it. So you just have to have your mind conscious of that all, at all times, just like anything else that's happened before, like caffeine. Mm-hmm, you just have yeah. to be aware, and, you know, make sure, you know, like if you were, I mean, even the things like ibuprofen, you know, if you're having pain, oh, yeah. I can't take ibuprofen every fucking day. You know what I mean? I mean? Everything we take, right? Like there's always this like awareness about like from every supplement to every meal, like there should always be an awareness about like what we're putting into our bodies. Right. Once it becomes like a habit, like you said, or like, cause I know like, like I, like I have an addictive behavior. So if yeah. I really like something, it's like, Oh, I'm just going to take it every day. Cause why would I not want to feel great today? Right. So yeah. that's one of those things you got to recognize how you are, your behaviors. If you're likely to do that, I got a bunch of samples of the Kratom, you know, and I just took one every day. I'm like, Oh, it's great. I feel good today. I'll feel good tomorrow. Feel good the next day. Oh, and then I ran out and I'm like, okay, well, still feel fine but if i had more i'd probably just keep taking them right because why wouldn't you You'd feel good right yeah sure. but also <laughs> too, you don't let the dosage creep up but the, the higher the dosage the more at risk of having that habit forming issue yeah. become an issue you know what i mean so yeah. if you are going to use it more frequently than not just make sure it's low dose and you'll have a much because like i probably could take it for three straight weeks right now and just stop taking it i won't feel anything i'll just be like oh that's a little sad you know but yeah, yeah. Go ahead. How would you Sorry. compare that, like the descent? Because I've never done any of them. Um, but how would you compare the descent versus, um, like CBD and G- THC? Because that's what I'm um, So they act differently. So CBD and THC, THC specifically, can actually ruin REM sleep. Yeah. Uh, well, granted, I'm a pothead. I smoke all day, every day, so I can give a shit less. <laughs> but, I do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> exactly. But. It does, in fact, like there are studies, THC does affect REM sleep and, and negatively affects it. Yeah. Whereas Kratom has been shown to improve. Now, there's not a lot of actual studies, but through even as Jordan Hutchinson, just through our clients, they're all showing their sleep patterns and they're all getting way better REM sleep. It's not a coincidence that it happens right at the, you know what I mean? So it's clearly putting people into better and getting people better sleep. THC, though, is great for calming you down and getting you to fall asleep, whereas the Kratom is going to help your quality of sleep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's kind of the difference, if you ask me. You know what else improves quality of sleep? GH. Mm. Facts. <laughs> the more the merrier. You're like a baby. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to uh, 
moderate your dose on that. Actually, that's just good all the time. So yeah, you can take as much as you can afford, and you'll as be much fine. as you can afford. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> no, well, listen, boys, um, that's that's great. Let's leave it there, and uh, we'll we'll definitely chat again all soon. Did we get to questions? Or... <laughs> no, we didn't. We're gonna have to just. I, I just got. Uh, I've got let's like, do, let's uh, do one. Are you, one. Okay, busy. let's do one. One, do one, one for yeah. two. <laughs> Make it good. Right. Um. Okay, we'll do Dominic's question. It says peas and carrots or carrots and peas. I don't have peas and carrots. Peas and carrots. Yeah. Peas and carrots. Yeah. Yeah. Peas, uh, carrots, and peas and carrots. Good question. <laughs> you got me confused now. Fuck. <laughs> I don't eat vegetables. I don't know. <laughs> okay, no. We'll we'll do one more. We'll do a better one. How many <laughs> how many calories would you think that you typically put down in a cheat meal? Do you track it at all? Do you not give a fuck? What do you do when you eat a cheat meal? Probably like two thousand. Two thousand calories. Yeah. Jesus, more good. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Uh, I, here's- you would throw a milkshake in, you're getting 800 to 1200 calories just like yeah. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, including, I'm including dessert. I'm including dessert because I'll have a cheat meal. I'll be like, you know, two double burgers, large fries, maybe like a chicken wrap, and then like half an hour pause after the meal. And I'm probably going to put down like two cookies that are like 400 calories. You have to have chocolate to finish off the meal. Otherwise, the meal's not. I'm a, I'm, I need a, I'm a big dessert guy, man. After every meal in my off season, I pretty much have like an Oreo or like some shit like that. Just one, <laughs> just one. like a sugar free pudding. Well, just one per meal averages six per day. So, yeah. you know. and and don't forget, you you always need to jack those blood sugars up so you need so you have a reason to use the insulin. Well, yeah. Exactly. What's the point of using use insulin today if I'm not eating Oreos? Yeah, makes no sense, dude. I mean, if you eat like uh, you go to Five Guys, you get two burgers and a fries. That's two thousand calories right there. Easy. That's also yeah. like forty dollars. <laughs> two burgers for Five that, Guys. Yeah. Bro, I haven't Jesus. eaten five guys in years. I just had it during prep this year. When did it get so expensive? Like, when did everything get so expensive? All of a sudden, yeah. McDonald's is expensive. Bro. Oh, McDonald's! Don't even get me started on McDonald's, bro. Like, yeah, McDonald's is like four, four, like four dollars fifty cents for like a double cheeseburger. Dude, they, they used to be like a dollar ninety nine for a junior, a junior cheeseburger. For the dollar menu, boys. The dollar menu. Yeah, the dollar exactly. menu was where it was at. The menu was the fucking shit. Get like three French fries for a dollar now. Yeah. That's how. That's how I got big back in the day. I was doing. I was doing dollar menu post workout. That's oh, probably what man. fucked up your stomach too. Robin. Exactly, but I got big. <laughs> <laughs> I got to two sixty natural. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, then you then you include DoorDash fees because, like, I don't know about you guys, but half the time I'm way too lazy to drive. I've somewhere. never done that on principle. Don't start. Do not start, bro. It's oh just... my god, man! I spent like oh. at least ten grand probably in the last two years. I'm fucking <laughs> Damn, bro. I mean, you're so bad. I'm Definitely. too lazy to go drive to damn food. If you can't drive to get it, you shouldn't eat it. Yep. You should walk. Oh, actually, <laughs> earn that shit. That's what I'm saying. It's so funny, man. Like if you if you make an, an order from Uber and they're late, how like upset you get. You're like, man, I can't believe they're late. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? But it's like I'll you could have just it. gone it. You could have just got it yourself. The entitlement. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> how, how dare they do two orders at once? Don't deliver yeah. another order when you got mine with you. What are you thinking? I'm oh, giving dude, you one it, star. I spent like $2.99 no on the Express, man. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I all do. Out. Yeah, I go all out. Oh, my, my, man, my twenty dollar yeah. fucking meal is like forty five dollars by the time I get and it. Then, and then, but you can't be an asshole and not tip. Like you got to tip the uh, at least ten percent. Fifteen is usually what I do. Yeah, but yeah. then it's like there's already a twenty dollar delivery fee, and now you're giving them another fifteen bucks. Yeah, <laughs> like, fuck, I don't dude? tip, man. I don't do that. Yeah, I, I feel like if enough of us stop tipping, it will force I, the I, restaurant I, industry. To change their ways and actually pay these people, right? Yeah. So I'm part. I'm, I'm I'm part of a movement of being an know. asshole, but also I'm I'm making a change. You know. <laughs> no, no, I can't. I can't vote for that. My my girlfriend's a server. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, she got that mad is... at me when I said that. <laughs> oh I mean, my god! No, I, I can only imagine the not... look you got. <laughs> like, it, uh... It's a server, and like it's it's fucked up that we like we I had to grow up surviving on whether or not she had a good week at work. Yeah. Like, yeah. why is she not making a steady pay? That doesn't make any fun. It never made any sense to me. Yeah, you know? it, and then yeah it's, it's I weird. I found something the other day that was like, you need to tip your tattoo artist. I'm like, 
Who the fuck? Dude, hell no. So this is what I was going to say. Yeah. So, dude, I went for a tattoo removal session today. 400 bucks for like 10 minutes of suffering. In the end, he gives me the machine like, well, what's the tip going to be? I didn't tip. Like, fuck off. I yeah, just paid like 400 procedure. for 10 what? minutes of like burning my skin. Yeah. And I got a tip for what? <laughs> it's, it's it's a, for you go through a drive through they, they ask you for a tip. Like you go to Starbucks, you get your coffee, and then it's like tip option. So like you poured a coffee in a cup everywhere. Dude, yeah. I'm already paying you for this. Nah, you just yeah, typed no. in my order. That's all you did. In this economy, fuck out of here, man. I don't no. know. Exactly yeah. tip culture. You know what? Who doesn't ask for tips? Drug dealers. You know, the people <laughs> you buy Great your God. gear from? Yeah. I, it's and solid industry. Yeah, you got it. You, you yeah. Got it. Yeah. All my gear guys tip me. They send me extra stuff just because of my clients go to I was gonna say sometimes you get it, you, sometimes you get a tip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spend your money on drugs instead of Starbucks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I think we'll wrap it up on that note. That's great. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for having me, guys. Yeah, Sorry, Nat. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, don't forget to check out <laughs> Stu's uh new shirts. Oh, I'm right? handy, but yeah, I'm selling t-shirts, my face yeah. on them. They're cool. Yeah, they're sick. And we got the Canadian beef t-shirt, so maybe we'll do a little swap these trades these at the I'll just I'll bring all my shirts. If yeah. anybody has shirts, everybody's gonna do a fucking shirt swap at the Olympia this year. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah, shirt swap. I believe. I'll bring mine as well. I'm actually yeah. making like an Olympia edition one for me because well, I'm competing. So well, obviously yeah. you have to do that, man. That's the obligatory Olympia qualification shirt. Yeah. You need that. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys there, man. It was a pleasure to meet you guys more oh, yeah. so in, now in person. Yeah. Awesome. Good luck Appreciate with your prep, you, boys. Marcelo. See you, man. Yeah. Peace. I'll see you guys in Brazil. You guys are all welcome. Bye. See you guys. Later, Stu. See you, Brady.